I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about the main element, jQuery calendaring, keystrokes, and more. Let's check it out. First up, over on the HTML5 doctor blog, there's a cool blog post about the main element. You're probably familiar with the header element and the footer element, not to be confused with the head element, slightly different than the header element. But the main element is a complement to header and footer. So if we scroll down here, you can see some example code, whereas before you might uh, create your body and then you'd have the header, some div in the middle with all of your main content, and then a footer down at the bottom. Well, now you can go ahead and use the main element in between uh, the header and footer. This, of course, is a new addition to a W3C specification, so it's not supported in every browser just yet, but you can probably go ahead and use like uh, HTML5 shiv or modernizer or something like that to go ahead and actually get it into your document. Uh, they list one other tip here. You want to make sure that it is displayed as a block level element just in case browsers don't support it just yet. But uh, pretty cool. Adds a little bit more uh, semantic value to your pages rather than just using div elements for everything. You know, it makes a lot of sense when you put it in the context of, you know, hey, we've got the header element and the footer element. How did we leave out the main element? Exactly. It's, it just seems like an oversight now, it, that, now that we have it. It's the stuff between the header and footer sandwich. Yep. Uh, next up, we have a project called Hand.js. This is a very interesting library that unifies all the different possible pointers. So uh, it'll unify uh, mouse events, pointer events, and touch events. And it's a polyfill. It does it transparently pretty much for you. It works on IE9 and up, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. So there's actually uh, a good blog post about it showing what you can do. So now you'll notice my pointer is in this box here, and it's just keeping track of, of what's going on, which is me uh, you know, moving this around in a circle here. And so what that code is doing, that will work whether I'm using a mouse, uh, a touch input device, or a pen. Uh, and in order to track all that, you only need to use pointer events. So this is kind of the first step in a unification of all of these different possible you know, pointer or touch events. Uh, I think it's a great idea and a really great first step. So go ahead and check that out, Hand.js. Thanks. That's, that's really handy, Jason. <laughs> Thanks for the pointers. I'm glad that we're keeping in touch with, uh, with times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is... I really got to hand it to you on that one. <laughs> Thanks. Next up is is cool blog post. Don't uh, you go pointing that finger at me. <laughs> Next up is a really cool it. Get it? blog post called Height Equals Width with Pure CSS. We will move on here, I promise. All right. Uh, basically... Don't want to leave you hangnailing. It allows you to maintain the aspect ratio of images when they get resized. Now, traditionally, that, that you had to do this with JavaScript, but they're saying in this post that it feels kind of ugly to have to recalculate the height of an element uh, in JavaScript. So the tip that they use is actually four years old. It was uh, posted onto a list part, and then there was a follow-up on Stack Overflow uh, a little while after, and I guess it just kind of got lost because I've never seen this before. Basically, you use two elements. One has the class box and the other has the class content. And the one with content has an aspect ratio of 1, 1, so it's square. The box, so you apply uh, some CSS to to adjust the desired width. And then if you apply a position absolute to the content, and say zero for the top, left, bottom, and right, it will actually fill the element. So this will maintain the aspect ratio. It's a little bit crazy and kind of complicated to explain, uh, but uh, this blog post does a really good job of articulating it. And they also have some other aspect ratios here, such as 2, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, and 16, 9 with the appropriate padding 
uh, you'll need to implement it. So pretty cool stuff. It actually kind of reminds me of this technique that I saw on CodePen not too long ago uh, called absolute, no, not absolute positioning. It was like this technique that allowed you to center something uh, vertically and horizontally at the same time. Use that same top left bottom right set to zero. Um, I think you could actually do that with this. You just have to set the margins to auto on all sides. But uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, that's a really good tip. Yep. Really got to hand it to them. Yep. Next up, we have a blog post on uh, Git tips for beginners to open source contributions. Uh, now, this is a blog post by a guy named Mark Berger, and it can be a little intimidating if you're new to contributing to open source and, you know, just how to work with Git and how to keep everything in sync. Or if you're vegetarian and, you know, you're afraid of burgers. Like me. <laughs> you never told me about that, Nick. I, I am vegetarian. No, the, you fear burgers. Oh, yeah. It, it's pretty scary. We should talk about this sometime. Mm -hmm. Maybe after the show. Maybe. So anyway, he goes into um, how to clone with SSH. Um, he also says to never work on the master branch. Uh, usually the project maintainers are going to be the ones that are committing to the master branch because that's where most of the development is kept. So what you want to do generally is work on your own branch and integrate the upstream changes, which he shows you how to do. Uh, update the master to reflect mainstream because there's going to be constant commits to this repository. So you want to make sure that your work is in sync, not the 90s band, but in sync with the upstream master. And finally, he tells you how to fix commits if you have a spelling error or something like that. So anyway, some really great tips in here, and you can find a link to that in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse, or on iTunes, search for us at the Treehouse Show. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Calendar. Dot js it's spelled c l n d r so perhaps it's pronounced calendar dot js it's, really hard, sure. it's hard to pronounce things without vowels yeah it is it is a jQuery calendar plugin just as the name implies and it looks like they have a couple of events on this calendar Persian kitten auction uh, cat frisbee kitten demonstration so a lot of cat related activities on this particular calendar uh, if we go ahead and scroll down. They tell you that it's a jQuery plugin for creating calendars, and you do this using underscore.js templates. Of course, underscore.js can is a templating uh, tool. It does a couple of other things, but you can create HTML templates um, using it. And then you use calendar.js to take the data from the calendar and plug it into your template. And you'll get something that looks like this. So if we go ahead and scroll through here we can go through the different months and if we click on a particular highlighted day we can see that there's events for that day so pretty cool stuff oh that took me back to the home page uh but yeah it's a really nice calendar plugin so be sure to check it out yeah pretty cool very uh, very semantic mm -hmm. uh, next up we have a library called mousetrap this is a library that makes intercepting key presses in JavaScript very, very easy. Normally, when you want to handle a key press in JavaScript, you have to look up the number of the key. This lets you just write it out using a string. Uh, it also supports a lot of different functionality here. Um, you can see they've got a couple bindings up front. So if I press the number 4, it highlights that line. X does that. And you get just a lot of different options in here. You use this bind function, and then you put the um, keystrokes that you want to use, and then anything inside will run when that particular command is invoked. Now, it's pretty easy to use and has a lot of browser support. Uh, the nice thing about this library compared to some of the other libraries that do the same thing is that you can do sequences of keystrokes and also intercept multiple different keys. So, uh, really great library. I'm, I'm loving it. Check it out. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a blog post over on the Intercom blog called Why Cards Are the Future of the Web. They Ooh, just, bold. They, they describe cards as, uh, I have no idea what's bold about them. But <laughs> the future. It's bold. True. It's, it's difficult to predict the future, so uh, that is a little bit bold. Uh, they describe cards as basically a way to segment content from third-party services and basically just kind of aggregate it into a single feed. Uh, they're saying that Twitter is moving to cards, Google's moving to cards, everyone's moving to cards. 
basically, it's just a great way to give you know small pieces of information uh, at a time and kind of aggregate them all together. It's just kind of like a design pattern. Uh, but I think it's an interesting concept that you're saying that the web is kind of moving away from these single pages or these single documents where, you know, say you'd have to go to a single page just to see a tweet. And, you, you know, nobody... Wow, what is this, 1996? Right. Nobody ever, like, hardly does that. Right. They just look at tweets in a stream. And they're saying, you know, it'd be cool if you could take data from other resources and kind of aggregate that together. Um, Google is doing this with Google Now. They're kind of taking information from disparate sources. So rather than, you know, providing you with like a Google search or something, they say like, you know, here's what the weather's like today. Here's what traffic is like. Here's, you know, all these different things that you want to know about. And it's contextualized and personalized to you. Hmm. So uh, inter interesting post. I, I definitely agree. I mean, I think, um, I think the web is kind of moving in that direction. And so... I guess it highlights why it's important to, you know, have an API so people can get at your data and actually use it effectively. I'm not entirely sure I agree with it. I don't know if that's the future. I'm not, I'm not really sure that that's in the, in the cards. Next up, we have a project called Chocolate Chip UI. Um, this is a mobile first web framework uh, with a little tiny bit of a twist. Um, includes, it includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, the nice thing is it gives you a native look for your web application. So you can see it looks a lot like Internet Explorer 7 and um, it's really easy to get started. But here's what you get. You get a bunch of different controls. So here's a segmented control. Here's what a select list looks like. Switches, ranges, deletable lists, uh, all the things that you would expect from a mobile framework. You know, this actually looks a lot more like iOS 7 rather than Internet Explorer 7. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> just, just a little correction there. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about it is there's also themes for Android, so it'll look like a native Android app or even a Windows mobile app. So they've really designed this pretty well. Uh, the documentation is very thorough, and it's pretty easy to get started. And of course, it's chocolate chip UI. So, so it's it, delicious. It's also the most delicious framework out there. Oh, anyway, yeah. who are you on Twitter? I am Jay Cipher. Who are you? I am at Nick RP. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes. You can get to them at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Also, search for us in iTunes at The Treehouse Show and leave us a nice review. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, business, mobile, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.